Okay, so let's get started with HTML. Uh, in this section, we're going to discuss things like what a doc type is. We're going to discuss tags and, you know, case, uppercase, lowercase, syntax, just different stuff like that. So you need to have some kind of text editor available that you can use. Uh, you can use like simple text or WordPad or Notepad or something like that. It's really easy. And when you type in, and I happen to be using Adobe Dreamweaver, it really doesn't matter. You're going to be saving the file with a, a .html extension. So I'm going to go out and do a save as and just save this in a folder. And what I want you to do and what we usually do for websites is we create a folder for all of our site stuff. And this is called a root folder right there, site. And you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. When you go inside, you usually see a folder called like images or something to that effect. And that's where we're going to put, oddly enough, our images and some other stuff. And then we put our pages out here. But the idea is we stick everything in a single folder. Each page is going to be a separate HTML file. And we put a .html on the extension right here. You can see that so that we can tell what's an HTML page. And the browser knows it too. All right, I'm going to save this. Index, as I mentioned before, is the first page of a website. So we're going to call it index.html. Now, we're in a text editor, let's say, and I want to get started here. You're going to notice that as we work in HTML, there's a lot of kind of things to think about. First of all, just some, some rules with HTML. We have what are called tags, OK? And a tag looks something like this. And I'm going to actually make this a little bit bigger for you. So let me change the preference here. Don't mind what I'm doing. I'm going to make this bigger. OK, so a tag looks like this. A tag essentially is an HTML thing that you can use that's already been predefined. And there's a whole listing of these things that you can use in your page to mark up your content, to tell you the browser essentially what something is. Like HTML means, well, this is an HTML document. I would suggest when you type these little tags in here that you type them in lowercase. Uh, because you're going to find that sometimes it's necessary. You have to do it to, for it to be what's called valid. It doesn't mean it's going to blow up or break in a lot of cases, but it just it's a good habit to get into. If you want to learn like what kind of tags are out there, there's a lot of websites you can go to. The w3c.org is one of them. This is another one that I like, htmldog.com, and they have an HTML reference. And these are the different tags that you can use. So these are all the, the things that you can essentially, you know, mark your content up with and tell the browser, hey, this is an image. That's what ING stands for. You'll also find that there are tag references for different flavors of HTML. And we need to talk a little bit about that too. The uh, w3schools.com, which sometimes is pretty good, uh, has an HTML5 tag listing. And these are all the tags. And it shows you ones that are no longer used in this version of HTML and the new ones. That's kind of interesting to look at. Anyway, all right, let me go back over to Dreamweaver. When you create tags, most of the time, you're going to be usually wrapping them around some stuff, some content, OK? A tag starts with what's called an opening tag. That's what this HTML is right here. A closing tag looks like this. It's got a forward slash. And Dreamweaver is going to finish these for me. It's kind of cheating. It's being smart, anyway. <laughs> so we have what's called an opening tag, and we have a closing tag. It's sort of like a, uh, I don't know, like a light switch. You say, hey, HTML starts here. This is an HTML thing. Whatever is right here is going to be HTML. And then we've got the close or the end of the HTML. So if I were to type in, hey there, that would say that, OK, hey there is inside of the HTML tags, which means whatever they say the browser says to do to HTML, like font, size, color, whatever, do it to this stuff right here inside the uh, opening and closing tags. They are upper, or lowercase, rather. I would suggest doing that as far as putting in the tags in there. You'll also find that some tags, um, you don't actually close or what are called self-closing. This is kind of weird. These are called void elements, and we'll talk about these a lot. Like, suppose you want to put an image on the page. Well, the image tag, and you always start with this little less than symbol, is IMG. Now, to close it, I'm not going to do this. You're going to find that we're not going to do something like this. There are some tags you just don't do this. To close the image tag, it actually looks like this. This is called a void element, which just means that there, nothing can be inside of it. There can't be two tags and some stuff between it, like the HTML right up here. So you'll find that there's only a few of these. There's like break, image, horizontal rule, things like that. And we'll, we'll run across some of them as we go. 
Most of the time, though, you are going to create a, an opening tag and a closing tag, sort of like this. All right. Tell you what, let's get started here. I'm going to start out with the most basic page we can create. You're going to see that we start out with an HTML tag, okay? And there is going to be something that goes before this. I will describe that in just a few minutes here, but let's start with the, uh, the main part of a page here. So to get started, we go with HTML, and then we're going to put a closing tag. The thing is, with HTML, we can make it easier to read by hitting a bunch of returns. I'm hitting the return key right now and putting in, let's say, the closing tag. It keeps doing this. Closing tag down here and expecting that a bunch of stuff is going to go right here in the middle, so just leaving a big open gap. We could type it all in one line. It doesn't matter. You can tab these in as much as you want. It, it, it doesn't really matter. It all gets stripped out essentially, okay? So with an HTML page, we start with an HTML tag. This says, hey, browser, this is HTML. The next thing we do is we include a two, the two main sections to an HTML page. We have a head section and we have a head tag and we open it and close it just like every other tag. And we have a body tag. So I'll open that and close that. And if you wanna follow along by typing, go for it. Okay, so you guys can type all this stuff in. Now, let's talk about what's called nesting and parent-child and all this crazy stuff. When we create this HTML tag, we're saying that anything in between this tag right here and this tag down here is part of the HTML. So if I put in these head tags, the opening and closing, it's going to go in between these two to say, hey, the head is part of the HTML document or the HTML tag. With HTML, you're going to get used to this pretty quickly. You really, really will. The head tags are called nested inside of HTML. You'll see that HTML is also called the parent of the head tags. Okay, too much. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. <laughs> so we have two sections. We've got a head section and a body section. In the head section, we will typically put a couple things. We'll put stuff usually that people won't see but the page uses, things like styling or a link to styling. We'll put like scripting or link to scripts, stuff that the page can't do. We'll put uh, information for search engines up here in the head. We'll also put in a title. So the first thing we do is put in a title here in the, in the head. The title tag, which whoops, looks something like this. Title open and title close. And the title could be just about anything you want. Usually it's information about your page. And this is what shows up at the top of the browser window. So it's pretty cool. This is like one of the only things in the head that actually shows on the page. So most of this stuff is going to be hidden and it's going to be just used by the page. The body is where your main design goes. So in the body, if you were to go into the tags here and let's say I, I like press enter or return and type in, hey there, that's going to show up in the browser on the page. As a matter of fact, if you want to test this out, what you can do is you can save your page and making sure that you've got the .html extension. You can go to a browser if you want to and usually go to like file, open file or something like that. And if you're using Dreamweaver, there's a quick, you know, go to browser button, but click open file, go to my desktop, let's say, and grab that file, wherever it is in my folder, there it is right there, the HTML page, open that up, and it should open it up for you. And you can see that we've got our title right here, usually on a tab or at the top, and there's our content right there. Kind of cool. All right, let me go back over to Dreamweaver or whatever editor you're in. And those are the main parts of a page, sort of the main structure and syntax of tags. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things here to go as well, like scripts and, you know, things like that. But the last thing I want to talk about with just our getting started with HTML is what's called a doc type. If you come up to the top up here where we have the HTML tag and you hit a return, put your cursor up there and hit a return, our pages need to have what's called a doc type. Now, a doc type is a document type definition for short, or for, you know, long rather, I should say. And it, it basically tells the browser or whatever is reading this code here, um, I guess you could say what version of HTML you're using. And it's got to be at the top of the page. These things look something like this. Let me show you a couple examples. Here's what an XHTML doc type looks like. Now, there are different flavors of HTML, and I'm sure you've heard of these before, or if you haven't, here we go. You've got HTML4, XHTML1, you've got HTML5, we've got HTML321, that kind of thing. But 
most people are going to use either XHTML or HTML5. This is what XHTML looks like as far as a document type it's called. It's sort of like a, I don't know, this little bit of code here, and you're not going to have to memorize this, don't worry. This bit of code just tells the browser, hey, it's an XHTML page. It's transitional, and there's a couple flavors or several flavors, actually, which means, hey, transitional means give me a break if I screw up. Like if I use a font tag, don't break the page. If this were to say strict right here, if you were to use something that XHTML didn't support, it really wouldn't work. And a lot of times it wouldn't validate, it's called. It wouldn't be valid. HTML5, this is what the doc type looks like. Now, HTML5 is new. I'm not going to talk a lot about it right now. It's going to be at the very end. We'll talk about it. But this is stuff that is really is going to come into play. You know, some people use it now. I use it now. But it's it's got some some nuances to it that some people just don't like to begin with, okay? HTML5 is a way for us to go in and add some new things. There's new content that we can work with, new semantic tags and different things like that. But um, if you're just getting started and we don't want to have to deal with working with all these different things, you can use this doc type right here. If you look right here at, at XHTML, or HTML rather, you're also going to see this thing right here called XMLNS, XML namespace. This thing needs to be in the HTML tag. So... If you guys want to, you can pause the video and copy this down. You can also copy it from a billion different websites. Um, as a matter of fact, if I show you one here, let me see. Um, the W3 schools, W3 schools doc type. You can go and search for this HTML doc type declaration. There we go. And they, I believe, give you, here we go, common doc type declarations. You'll see that we have the one we want to use right now in the beginning is XHTML 1.0 transitional. So you'll see it right there. You can copy this and paste it into your page above the HTML tag. If you want to go with the HTML5, which is new and you know there's some things that you need to do to get it to work for IE or an Internet Explorer, you can use this. All right, I'm going to go back over. I'm going to copy this and put it on my page. Copy, go to my page, and paste it right there. There we go. Now, the HTML tag itself has to have... Um, this is going to be called, you'll see, this is actually called an attribute, but we're not going to talk about these yet. It's this right here, XMLNS. All right, so if I copy this, and you can just pause the video and type that in, what I want you to do is we're going to go into the HTML tag here, right here. Put your cursor after the word HTML, press the space bar space, make sure there's a space here, and you can type in this XMLNS, um, and I got an extra space there, and type this in. This is necessary for XHTML to work to validate, I should say, okay? So a doc type is something that we want to put on our pages. So in case we want to validate, validate literally means that we're going to check to make sure that things are working properly and the tags are working and everything's hunky-dory and working, okay? Um, and you can validate, just to show you real quick, just point this out, using something like the W3C Markup Validation Service. It just checks to make sure your tags are working, like you didn't screw it up, like type in... Instead of head, you typed in herd or something like that. So it just gives you an idea of, of if you're in the, going in the right direction, if it's valid or not. Okay. Anyway, this is getting started with HTML. This is the, the basic initial stuff that we need to have. This is probably the most simple page that we can create, creating doc types and things like that. I'm going to save the page. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an intro to CSS styling.